day, upon request of SZV management, a third follow-up meeting took place with us, the co-coordinators of the Consumer Coalition. As reported already in former press briefings, as Consumer Coalition, we have tabled our concerns and suggestions concerning the financial situation of the social and health insurance funds. SZV management has promised to provide us with more information so that we can come up with the solutions for the changes the different asset fee funds are experiencing. Okay, so I'll go back. Asset fee management has promised to provide us with more information so that we can also come up with the solutions for the challenges that different asset fee funds are experiencing. In the second meeting, the digitized annual accounts of 2015, 16, 17, and 18, with the declaration of the SOAB accountants, were provided. We are still waiting, awaiting additional information on each fund to correct the financial statements since 2011 prepared by the SFV. Why we have requested this information? As the funds which SFV has to manage have to be administered separately, we have objected the way SFV is presenting the annual accounts in combined financial statements. Legally, SSV has to administrate each fund separately and has to provide for each fund separate annual financial statements. Well, Unlawful Depletion of Workers' Sickness Insurance Funds, ZV. Let us, for example, or for instance, take the ZV funds. Based on the SZV administration, last year, Minister Emil Lee of the VSR provided Parliament with the annual increasing deficit of the ZV funds. Parliament was told that the increasing medical expenses for seniors with an SZV 60 plus card are causing the increasing deficit in the ZV funds. Proposal of SZV in the annual reports and of Minister Lee was that the premium has to be increased to balance the ZV fund. We have protested these figures presented in Parliament and the deficit presented in the annual account. We have also protested the solution of a premium increase presented in Parliament. Government has already shifted its contribution for the family members of the workers and increased the premium contribution of the workers from 2.1% to 4.1%. Now they want to increase the premiums to cover the increasing deficit in the fund. What will be the premium increase for the workers? FZV nor the minister did not mention this. We have argued that there is no legislation that allow SZV to include the premiums of the seniors and the medical expenses for the seniors in the ZV fund. The ZV fund is a fund for workers and their family members. Seniors who are working can be lawfully included in the fund, but the 60 plus unemployed seniors, their, voluntarily, their voluntary premium received and their health care expensive has to be administered separately. The same way SZV is administering for the government, the OZR, civil servants, and the PP card holders, medical expense, and government's contribution. SOAB accountants formulated it this way and consequently did not approve the SZV annual account for years now. We quote the, SZ, 
the SOAB accountants in their accountant declaration in the last 2018 annual report. And I quote, certain elderly residents who are typically pensioners over the age of 68 are being provided health care via the ZV fund even though they do not meet the, the employment requirement stipulated by the Landsverordering Ziekteverzekering. That's the Landsverordering AB 213-230, GT number 802, and AB 215, number 9. In case you want to look it up. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. On Monday, December 9th, the World Bank, Government of St. Martin, and the Princess Juliana Airport signed the Airport Terminal Re Reconstruction Project Grant and Project Agreement. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all who in one way or the other contributed to making this become a reality. The World Bank via the Dutch Trust Fund, the NRPB led by Mr. Connor, the Honorable Prime Minister Silvia Jacobs, and for all those and who were involved in any form or fashion. This was a, a lengthy process. We, we came in and every other day we had meetings with NRPB, there were late nights, um, to try to have this process concluded as fast as possible. Today I am happy to know that the airport staff no longer have to worry every month if their jobs are secured, if they will be paid, and we can continue to rebuild our airport and get us back to being the number one airport again in the region. We also had, we also took the opportunity to have meetings with the World Bank and also the IMF, which consisted of the Prime Minister, our advisors, myself, the regional director, also, Ms. Tassin Saeed, Acting Vice President for the Latin America and the Caribbean market. Also, the Trust Fund team and NRPB. As for now, we look forward to the prompt release of the insurance claim to be followed by the remainder of the funds as agreed upon. PGIA is our gateway to the world and the gateway is the basis of our livelihood. Yes, we also took this time to meet with the IMF and CARTAC and have made agreements regarding assistance they can provide us with respects to the improvement of our tax system and the tax administration. I would also like to give a, a special shout out to Ms. Patricia Krolis, who celebrated 43 years working in the Ministry of Finance last week Friday, which was also her last day. Um, she also mentioned that this was her first surprise uh, event party in her life. So that was very nice to see. And she mentioned a couple of key things that struck, uh, that res resonated with me in her speech. She 
she was very happy to be able to, um, to celebrate for three years in government. One of the questions I asked her was, I need to know how you survive, the, the, the secret to surviving, um, not just in government, but in any, any organization, um, to survive for 43 years and be that uplift, upbeat. Um, she's always smiling, she's always happy. And so the, my main question to her was, on the side, I need to know how you survive. Um, during her speech, she also mentioned the fact that she had support from two key individuals uh, while working in government in terms of helping her keep up to date with software and new systems. And that also made me realize that as a government, we have to also do a better job of, of supporting our staff, keep, um, training our staff um, through our HR. We can't just uh, assume that everyone is staying up to date on their own. We have, we have a lot of our civil servants that take a lot of flack for decisions that are made at the top or decisions that are not made at the top. We have our, our civil servants that are the front line, for example, our cashiers, that also take a lot of flack for things that they should not. And of course, with the, the, the frustrated uh, clients that come to government, I realize that we, as a government, we need to do a better job of making decisions um, not based on emotions, but based on decisions that, that would help our staff to make better decisions. We have to provide them with the tools that they could do their jobs better. Uh, one of those tools is updated software. Ms. Corliss also mentioned that. She said that she hopes to see one day that the whole of the government has updated software, software that isn't dated anymore and is up to our times. In saying that, um, in the Ministry of Education, ECYS, and Finance, I have requested via the, the ICT department to source a new uh, software. It's called AIMS. And this software is an advice management software in line with my vision and belief and having more accountability in government. This software will allow us to keep everything digital. There are a couple of ministries that already have it, and I believe it, it should be done in every ministry, actually. And what this software does is that an advice is written in a department, and it stays within the system up until the minister. So no more having advice, wa having advice walked to another department or uh, advice taken from one ministry to another by hand, by a boulder, uh, where it could be lost or it could be stored away in a, in a desk. No, this will improve, hopefully, our accountability, because at any point in time, we will know where this advice is, how long it has, been, it has been there, and now we can start to manage from top down. We can now question, why has this advice been sitting at your desk uh, for this long? So it helps with accountability across the board. Uh, and also, one more thing in line with that I, I want to say is that uh, civil servants aren't robots. I know we expect a lot from them, and even though I'm not the Minister of General Affairs, I see, as Minister of Finance, a lot of advices, a lot of complaints that are coming in. And I believe a lot of these things could be avoided with proper communication, again, from top down, proper communication, and training. Um, let's, let's, as a government, ask our employees, what can we do to help you help me? Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pen code.
or fingerprint. Download WIB Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit wib-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. There's a fact that traffic these days are very, is very hectic. I had a talk with the chief of police, and we intend to have a meeting this afternoon in order to determine a way forward. Uh, we know this is the busiest time of the year with all the cruise ships and also the Christmas season coming along. So we are going to sit down with a team and try to strategize and see how we can alleviate the traffic, not only during the day, but also in the morning at the schools. Also on the 6th of December, last week Friday, I had the introductory meeting with members of the RAT for Rex and Harving, which is the members of the Law Enforcement Council, Ms. Clarinda and Chief Inspector Lisandra Marquez. The council formulates independent professional objective inspections that lead to issuing of relevant, useful, practical inspection reports within the judi judicial chain. In 2016, 17, and 18, the council carried out inspections in the prison at the request of the Ministers of Justice based on the YVO meetings that are held annually. My cabinet is taking a serious look at these recommendations in order to determine the extent of compliance and risk identified in these recommendations. While most things require funds which are scarce to say the least, I am committed to comply with the full, to the full extent with the recommendations that are feasible and achievable in this interim period. I've also taken a step to meet with the council once every month in order for us to go over various things. Last week, I also had the opportunity of um, going to the retirement ceremony that was hosted for Chief Inspector Ricardo Henson. It was a great honor for me, along with the police department, to express words of appreciation to Mr. Henson on his well-deserved retirement. Permit me to further state that we are indeed happy and appreciative of the 44 years of service rendered to the Ministry of Justice by Mr. Henson. His care and concern for the protection and the well-being of the people of St. Martin is highly appreciated. I would like to touch on a topic that is very much out there, and I also touched on it a bit last week, but I'll go further into details as I've done research in the last days. The caretaker minister of justice, Heer Links, so the previous caretaker minister of justice, made a decision on the 12th of November to ratify a ministerial decree in which the process of the Rex Pusici, the function book and the placement process of which follows concerning the ministry of justice is to be co coordinated via the department of PNO. Additionally, a letter was sent to the governor that outlined an account of events from his perspective to which concludes, and I quote, Excellency, Ik kan op dit moment alleen maar concluderen dat het een chaos is, zowel qua wet en regeling, als in de verschillende interpretaties en het gewicht dat daar, daaraan wordt toegekend door de diverse betrokkenen. Further, the caretaker minister stated that, in his opinion, the question regarding the need to rectify these salaries from 10 10 10 is indeed necessary to uphold the given the financial situation of the country. Yet, mere five days after submitting this letter, the caretaker minister, also in his capacity as Minister of Finance, proceeded to enter into a MOU on the 17th of November 2019, in which commitments regarding the retroactive adjustment of the salaries is to be paid to the employees of the KPSM. It was committed to calculate such back on ten, from 10 10 10 the, in the form of advance based on their current salary scale, which is to be recreated to include the 16.3% and the indexation of the 3.2% representing the new salary scale. What I find very disturbing and irresponsible is that the decision was taken 
also outside the legal authority of any one or two ministers, albeit the Minister of Finance, to commit the country in such a financial obligation, why himself on numerous occasions pointed out that it's a skeleton budget. Given the reality of the country's financial picture, I must emphasize that no one was present during the signing of this MOU. Not the Secretary General from Justice, nor Finance, no controllers, no legal advisors, nor personnel advisors. Based on the account of the union representative, this commitment was to be paid via the sale of the UTS, so based on the first tranche. Um, how the tranche was set up was 9 million, 9 point something million, 9 point something million, and the last one was 1 point something million, which was to be paid out to the police officers based on the fact that the minister then stated that he will retract the money from the first tranche. I must state, we cannot spend the same dollar twice. Why I say that? The same minister, in our earlier release, paid Telem 13 million dollars, 30 million guilders, from the same 9 million guilders, so he added additional 4 million guilders, in, term, in order to establish the back pay that was owed to Telem, which is 30 something million, only to receive the sale that went in his payment. Then commit that same money to the workers at KPSM. The UTS shares were sold due to the handling of the said sale. We have not received the full payment and cannot even collect the said payment until the legislative adjustments are made, which are not yet finalized. Yet you promised the funds to the KPSM workers, which to be paid out in December 2019. And I will repeat, you cannot spend the same dollar twice. I have been confronted with this reality as a Minister of Justice, and I, I vow to the workers of KPSM and all the workers within the Justice Ministry that I will find a solution for it, and it has to be done the right way. Because anything that you do that, that cannot be justified based on the law, you will be held personally liable. But you have my full commitment to proceed with this project. I would like to say to the former minister, shame on you, Minister Kalings, for being irresponsible and further causing confusion and frustration amongst the Ministry of Justice while holding this portfolio for a mere couple of weeks. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Jose Helga and I play basketball. I have organized basketball events in St. Martin. Sport matters to me because it makes everybody come together in unity. So I challenge the businesses community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facility. I'm also asking the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take on the challenge and step up for sport because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sports SSM Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter, hashtag are you in. As was expected, poverty reduction promises are at the order of the day on the campaign trail. In radio announcements and interviews of politicians on radio and in TV talk shows. Until now, none of these politicians, neither their political parties, have committed by signing the Declaration on the Eradication of Poverty which we have provided to all political parties to eradicate the poverty. Only the St. Martin Christian Party committed to eradicate the poverty. As we have informed you before, only the St. Martin Christian Party has signed the declaration and has managed to get some of the points of the declaration in the governing program. We also provided you with an evaluation to illustrate that paper is patient, and that the UD ministers of Tiat, Vesa, Vromi, which had to execute the eradication of poverty points in the governing program, did not implement none of these action points. No social protection floor equality for the St. Martin Kingdom citizens. All of a sudden, Income of seniors and pensioners are being mentioned. Income of working class families are topic at the campaign platforms. 
As anti-poverty platform, we have been championing for the last seven years to eliminate the inequality in the kingdom and to provide us with an equal social protection floor, just as on the northern side of the island has been implemented already in the French Republic. None of the politicians and their parties for which they are campaigning have committed to champion in parliament for an equal social protection floor. Tax breaks for seniors, even pension increases are being promised. But none of the politicians has promised to make the old age pensions equal to the ones in the Netherlands. None wants to bring down the cost of living in St. Martin. The cost of living in St. Martin, the highest in the Kingdom of the Netherlands, none of them is championing and explaining how they are going to bring down the cost of living in St. Martin. None is promising the Consumers Coalition the protection for their affordable health, food and nutrition program. Some of the politicians visited, registered to become a member of the program and bought some produce at the health fair. Some came to volunteer once or twice in the program. We all can guess why. But what will they do for our more than 4,000 members already registered in the program? How they will make our quality of life in St. Martin more affordable? Zip. Nada. Some promises to come with an increase of the minimum wage. Some want to give pensioners a tax break. Did you hear them about eliminating the TOT, turnover tax, or replacing the turnover tax for a more justifiable sales tax?